I'm so delighted and so honored that our inaugural lecture on reinventing the global order will be delivered by Her Excellency Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados. Since taking office in 2018, Prime Minister Motley has emerged as one of the most powerful voices among political leaders on the international stage. She's fearless. She speaks truth to power on issues like climate justice, vaccine inequity, sovereign debt, and the unique vulnerabilities facing small economies. My friends, the global order is not working. It simply is not delivering in the areas of critical importance necessary to achieve the goal of sustainable development for the majority of our world's population. Too many people in this world live in conditions of hunger, of poverty, of indignity, and of inequality. If we are to achieve prosperity for all, then we must really try, because if not, it will remain a distant aspiration, far too distant for too many. We have faced a world that has cemented the right of a few to determine the fate of the rest of us. I want to share with you in a few minutes, very briefly, my thoughts on the role of trade in the solutions to two of the most significant transitions facing humanity, and to look at how the WTO can be and must be in the vanguard of that change that we all need. One of the most profound transitions facing the world that we live in today is the rise of the new digital empires. You have to call them empires. The world carries out an increasing proportion of its trade on digital platforms. And the digital trade changes the geography of trade and allows for the high mobility of people, technology, and services. The digital world is highly concentrated. Never before has the global economy seen so much concentration of economic power in so, so, so few hands. This is still all highly distortionary and discriminatory, largely beyond WTO scrutiny and the future of international commerce. One of our most urgent challenges as well is the climate crisis. It cannot be avoided. It is an existential crisis, not just for small island developing states, but for all of us on this planet. And it is just a question who is affected first. My country lies on the front line, as you know, between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. We have contributed little to the stock of greenhouse gases that has literally driven modern development from the industrial age. And in spite of that minimal contribution, the temperatures and the sea levels continue to provide significant damage to our countries and to our people. My friends, rich industrialized countries telling poor countries and less industrialized nations that they should care more for the environment will not solve the climate crisis. The instrument of new colonialism, my friends, is the bypassing of treaty-based organizations to pursue the discriminatory application of non-tariff rules on finance, on tax, and on next generation standards, all in the name of legitimacy. The answer, however, as difficult as it is, is not to give up on internationalism or multilateralism, not to surrender and not to retreat. The world needs more mobile labor, capital, and technology to defeat the climate crisis. And we need to be part of a digital revolution to deliver better, to deliver better health and better education and a better quality of life. International trade is at the center of solving the climate crisis problem. And the use of digital trade is critical if we are to advance global development. Trade, my friends, as you know better than most people globally, is at the center of all of our profound challenges. At the center of global solutions to global challenges is equitable international trade. Thank you.